Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. I just came back from a short two weeks podcasting break to really review my progress as a content creator. It has been a little over four months now since I started this podcast and the entire process of doing this on top of my day job has been somewhat overwhelming and emotional for me in a good way. And that is mainly because the reality of actually finally becoming a content creator again has brought a lot of new realization about myself, whether it's in terms of what I want in my life or how do I want my career to look like and realizing my own potential as a content creator and an entrepreneur, yada, yada, yada. There's like a lot going on in my head. And so instead of trying to push through and continuing to create my weekly content and thinking about all these things at the side and also getting busy with my work, I decided to just take a step back, take a short break and give myself some space to reflect on what I've learned and how do I want to move forward in this journey. Pursuing a path in the creative industry was something that I've always wanted internally, but for the longest time, I had managed to deny it to the point that I didn't realize that it's what I want until like last year that I had that huge aha moment. And I think that it is something that is very common among millennials, especially those who are like me, who wanted to be a content creator. Because content creator didn't even exist as a job title until we were in our 20s, maybe. And on the other hand, we grew up with parents or teachers who told us that we have to focus on our academics, get good grades and get a professional job. And that is how we can achieve success in life. And this mindset that we grew up with has caused a lot of false beliefs about our talents and our potentials in making money. And I had to go through a lot of mindset shifts and rethinking to realize that a lot of these things that I once believed to be true is actually not really true. And that is why in today's episode, I want to talk to you about the fear and misconceptions associated with pursuing a career in the creative industry. And as I'm sharing that with you today, I'll kind of touch on my journey in becoming a content creator as well, which is something that is not a straight and direct path, and you get it later. So the first thing that I really had to shift my mindset around is the thought and programming in my head since I was a child that you cannot make money as an artist. I was trying to recall if there is a specific moment in my childhood that any adult told me this statement, but I really couldn't remember any specific moment or memory of it. And if anything, I remember that my parents were actually very supportive of us when it comes to art. Because my dad is a great artist himself, he would actually personally help us with every single arts assignment that we have, especially when it comes to exams. Like even up till today, he's helping my nieces, like his grandkids with their arts assignments as well. And whenever we had arts competition, like me and my sisters, my parents would actually take day off to drive us to the competition and be there for us all the way as well. My dad is also the person who taught me how to play the guitar and we really enjoyed this moment together. Like, they were always supportive with all these artsy stuff. But I think it's because of their personal experience. So both of my parents are not super educated. Their highest education experience is actually only up till junior high or from three in Malaysia. And because of that, 
it has limited their career opportunities as well. Like my dad was not able to get as high ranking as he wanted in the previous company that he was working with. And so both of my parents, even though they were supportive of our arts and they can see that we are talented, they were also always encouraging us to really get good grades, to get higher education because they personally experienced that not having education was kind of like a setback for their own career and their lives. And I get it because they personally had that experience. And so I guess because of that, I have deeply ingrained in my head that you cannot make money as an artist. You have to get good grades so that you can become a professional and you can make more money. And that is how you can get successful. And as a child, I was in primary school when I already had that idea. It became a very strong foundation in my belief system that stayed with me for the longest time. In fact, I remember that there is this instant in my secondary school days where this belief continues to limit myself in terms of considering different career options. I remember this conversation that I had with my class teacher when I was either 16 or 17 years old. She asked me what I would like to study after I graduated from high school. And I told her that I might pursue accountancy or actuary. (laughs) And like even saying it out loud now makes me feel funny because it didn't sound like this kind of job is just so not me. But at that point, those were the options in my head because I was very good at mathematics, okay? And those were like professionals, right? And I remember that my teacher was so surprised by my answers because she felt like I have the perfect personality for mass comm or she felt like I would be perfect for the broadcasting world. But even then, at 16, 17 years old, I actually was surprised that my teacher would even suggest that and I just brushed it off because it was so ingrained in my head that good grades, good office job, good money, successful. Like that is so ingrained in me. And this belief would continue to stay with me even after I graduated from university, even as I explored different job opportunities, different job titles, different career options, which I will list down to you sometime later in this podcast about the different things I've tried to do so far. And even as I've done so many things, I still had that mindset of you cannot make money as an artist. And so that was a huge belief system that I had to reprogram and rewire to get to the point where I am right now to be confidently telling you that, hey, I'm a content creator. And the mindset or the idea or the concept that I want to share with you that helped me to get to where I am now is money is created with more value, not time. And in order for me to explain more about this phrase or this idea to you, I want to share a story with you. And if you are someone in the business world and you consume business content, you might have already heard of it. I actually found this story from LinkedIn because so many people has copied and pasted it before. And I'm going to read it out for you. Think of this as your short audiobook, okay? This is a story of the ship repair man. A giant ship engine failed. The ship's owners tried one expert after another, but none of them could figure out how to fix the engine. Then, they brought in an old man who had been fixing ships since he was young. He carried a large bag of tools with him, and when he arrived, he immediately went to work. He inspected the engine very carefully, top to bottom. Two of the ship's owners were there, watching this man, hoping he would know what to do. After looking things over, the old man reached into his bag and pulled out a small hammer. He gently tapped something, and instantly, the engine lurched into life. 
He carefully put his hammer away, and the engine was fixed. A week later, the owners received a bill from the old man for ten thousand dollars. What? The owners exclaimed. He hardly did anything. So they wrote the old man a note saying, "Please send us an itemized bill." And the old man sent a bill that read, "Line item one, tapping with a hammer, two dollars. Line item two, knowing where to tap, nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-eight dollars." And the moral of the story is that effort is important, but knowing where to make an effort makes all the difference. If you want to make more money in life, you need to stop thinking how much more time do I have so that I can work harder. But instead, you should be thinking, what value can I give that people are willing to pay me for? I was just discussing this with my friend Elaine, who manages social media for many brands, and we both see the value of the content that content creators put on social media. You got to see this for brands. When you pay content creators, you are paying for the exposures that you get, and not only that, you are actually paying for the existing connection that the creator already have with their followers, which is something that you would not be able to get when you put ads out through Facebook or Instagram because there is no personal connection that can instantly convince people. To want to try your brand. On the other hand, for followers, they are pretty much getting free information or entertainment on social media from so many different content creators, and maybe some of them are loyal supporters and they actually pay to subscribe to a community in return of valuable content or the network that they get, whether it's to feel supported or relatable. So you'll see, it's all about an exchange of value. People pay not for the time that you are putting into the work, but for the value that they feel that they can get out of the things that you create. And this is definitely one of the biggest aha moment that was able to help me to rewire and reprogram the idea in my mind to convince myself that hey. I can actually make a career out of being a content creator, because money is created with more value, not time. Another thought that I used to have that kind of limited me from becoming a content creator. It's also because I failed before, and I was afraid that I will fail again. For some of you, maybe you have not failed yet, and you are worried that you would fail. Many of you might not know this that I actually started creating content since I was 14 years old. I started blogging since then. When even blogger was not a thing yet, I started blogging on Windows Live Spaces. I doubt anybody even know that. And when you say that, it makes me sound like super credible. Like, wow, that's an extensive experience. <laughs> But what if I tell you? That I was a content creator for 15 years, and I failed to have many followers or make a lot of money out of it. Ouch! Now it sounds kind of painful, and that is actually the thought that I had for a very long time. That I created content for 15 years, but I never made it. I kind of failed, and I was embarrassed, and I felt like a failure. And it really took me a long time and a lot of learning and shifting in my head to really find the courage to try again this year. Pursuing a career in a creative industry is something that not everyone can understand. When I was blogging almost every single day as a teenager. My sister would make this harmless remark. Okay, she didn't mean to. Like she didn't mean to take me down or or strip of my dreams. She was just being a normal sister, saying what a sister would say, and she would just joke that like, oh my god, Wendy's trying to be a famous blogger, and like, 
it's common. Sisters say that. Siblings say that. And every time I bring this up, my sister still kind of feel bad. But it is something that somehow made me feel like it's an embarrassing to admit that you are trying to be a content creator or an artist or a singer or an actor and stuff like that. Like, was I really doing it just to be famous? Like, what if I don't get famous? Is that really what I want? Um, think about it. If you have a friend who tells you that they want to be a singer or an actor or maybe an artist, you would naturally first be concerned for them. Because in a creative industry, you only have two choices. Either you make it big and get successful, and that is how you kind of have a more steady stream of income, or you become that mid-tier actor who is always doing supportive role at the background with only one to two lines, or perhaps you are dancer for a not-so-famous local band, and you become that person who tried to make it but never achieved it, and people kind of sympathize with you. Like, they know that you've worked hard, but you didn't really get to that point. And for me... I was really afraid that I became that person. Like, I'm not saying that it's embarrassing for that person, but I was worried that I would try and I would fail. And it just felt pathetic. And these were the thoughts that were going on in my head. And what I really had to kind of go through to help myself get out of it is to really first strip off my ego and my pride. And only with that, I was able to actually think clearly about what is it that I truly want out of a career in the creative industry. And I came into this conclusion. I realized that I wanted to be a content creator not to become famous, but it's really about pursuing that creative lifestyle and career that makes me feel most fulfilled in life. First of all, I am natural in content creating. Ever since I was in high school, I've always had a knack of writing out my thoughts on my blog. And with this podcast that I started this year, I realized that I am able to use my voice to articulate these thoughts pretty well. And I was able to really relate and connect with my audience. And so with this realization, I have two choices. I can choose to make use of this gift and perhaps make a career out of it so that I can have the lifestyle that I want, which is to have a career that gives me the flexibility to maybe one day be a mom. And I don't need to send my kids to daycare and worry about them as I am in a fixed day job. Or I can choose option number two, which is to deny this job and to continue to make a career out of something else that I'm also pretty good at, but it's not something that I am the most passionate in and perhaps not have that flexibility that I was looking for in the lifestyle that I want. I am only 30 years old now and I truly have spent the last 7 to 10 years in doing different things in terms of my career. And I want to list it down for you to realize that it actually took me a lot of turns to get to where I am now. I started off my career right after graduation um, in content marketing for brands. And at that point, I was still doing blogging at the site. And I eventually got into YouTube at the site. And then I also started freelancing to manage social media for some brands and I did website designing stuff as well. I posted the gigs on Fiverr and I had a side hustle in it. And at one point in my life, when I was taking a mental health break, I actually tried to be a henna artist. So I was drawing all this temporary tattoo arts on people's body for a living for a pretty short term in my life. And then... As I get back into another 9-to-5 job doing content marketing again, I dabbled into drop shipping. Like I did e-commerce selling socks. And I remember I have a very cute shop name. It's called Life Doesn't Sock. 
<laughs> and I made it a very like positive and fun brand, which is very cute, but it kind of failed. And I know why I failed. I can share more about it in another episode if anybody is interested about such things. And then I dabbled into the coaching industry, which is where I kind of still am in, in my day job. Um, but I was doing personal branding coaching. I was doing social media coaching. I was doing video content coaching on the side by myself. And as I went through so many changes in my career, and as I really reflected on what I wanted in the past year, I went through all of this only to realize that the only constant as I was going through all these different experiences was that I've always continued to be a content creator on the site. It is something that I genuinely enjoyed doing and continue to just keep on doing because I want to and kind of have this small dream that, ah, if only I can make full-time money with doing this. I said that I have 15 years of experience as a content creator. But out of this 15 years, I was always doing content creating on the site because I had my own doubts that I can actually make it a full-time thing. And I was also pretty clueless about what I was doing when I create content. Like I did it out of passion, but I didn't think about the potential strategy that I can use. Like who are my target audience? What brands do I want to attract? Or what kind of value can I give to actually in exchange get money for it? Like I've never really thought about it seriously until this year as I started this podcast. And that's when I start realize like, if I don't do all these things, especially with all the experiences that I've gathered in the last few years of being in a coaching industry and being an entrepreneur, like, isn't it very wasted if I don't actually apply them and at least try to make content creation my full-time thing? Like, what do I have to lose? And what's the worst that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is I don't make money from it and I just need to go back to a full-time job. I'm pretty confident that I can get an office job anywhere in this world. And with the skill that I've already built being a podcaster, I can even try to be an MC or like, I don't know, get into radio if radio still exists. I can do so many things and I really didn't need to worry about it. And what got me to this point is to just strip off that pride and ego and that fear of looking like a failure in other people's eyes. When I did that, it just makes it a lot easier for me to commit into a decision of wanting to be a full-time content creator or to pursue a path in a creative industry. But I do have to admit that there is one realization that I realize is that the older we get, the more commitments we have the more responsibilities that we have. Perhaps you have already committed to a car loan. You got to pay your rent or maybe you got to pay your mortgage. If you are planning to get married, you have to save up for a wedding. And if you plan to have kids, you have to save up or figure out a way to make enough so that you can sustain the life of another little tiny human being for the rest of their life. And I know that my generation is also known as the sandwich generation for those who had to kind of provide for their kids and also for their aging parents. It is a responsibility that a lot of millennials are kind of going through. And all these reasons just makes it a lot harder to try out a riskier career path. Things are at higher stakes and it's likely going to get worse only from here. But the thought that I want you to have is, if not now, when? If this is something that at 30 years old right now, you know that it's a dream that you have and you've always been thinking about it, wishing that you've done something at your early 20s, what do you think you're going to think when you are in your 40s or your 50s if you don't take action today? 
I'm pretty sure you've heard of stories of grandpas and grandmas who shared that they wished that they try out for something that they wanted to do when they were younger, but perhaps because of the war or because of their family circumstances that they didn't get to achieve that. But if you have the privilege to do it now, perhaps you might need to sacrifice in terms of your social life or the lifestyle you can have, the money that you're making. Perhaps you need to sacrifice your after office hours to work on your craft or to build your connection or to promote your work. Wouldn't it be more worth it if you actually tried right now? We are living in a generation that is so used to having instant gratification. If I don't get to watch a show on the internet right now, I am upset. If I don't get to eat that dessert that I want to have because it cannot be delivered to me right now, I'm disappointed. We are so pampered with how things come to us so easily and so quickly these days that we forget that good things take time. And get this, great things take even longer. The sooner you can get started, even if it's on the side, and even if you have to sacrifice some sleep or the time with your friends and family, even if you need to bootstrap and do everything by yourself at the start, you will be glad that you actually tried to do it. Because remember this, the older you get, the harder it is for you to commit. So if not now, when? And that kind of sums up with what I wanted to share about the fear and misconception about pursuing a career in a creative industry. And I hope that by sharing my personal journey and experience that it was able to perhaps give you a little bit of push to do what you've always wanted to do. And I know I am coming from a place where I am still a content creator on the site that I still needed a day job to sustain my day-to-day life. But I am really positive and at least committed to the idea that I'm actually going to make this work full-time. And I'm pretty excited to take you guys along in the journey with me to witness this with me. Whether I'm going to succeed or fail, it kind of depends on you guys. Um, And so on that note, I would like to also share with you that Small Girl Big Talk is working on further expanding our brand to build our community for people like you and I who are seeking comfort in our adulthood journey. And so if you think that my vision and community aligns with your brand and would like to sponsor or collaborate with me, you can drop me an email at hello at wendyvas.com or you can find the email on my show notes. So anyways, to sum up this episode today, if there are three things that you can take away today, I hope that it would be this three. And that is number one, money is created with more value, not time. Instead of thinking that you don't have time to make money as a creator, focus on the value that you can give. Number two, I want to remind you to strip off your pride and ego And ask yourself, what is it that you truly want? And number three, remember, if not now, when? I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And before you go, I have also another good news to share with you. And that is Small Girl Big Talk is now also on Apple Podcasts. If you are someone who prefer to use that platform to listen to your podcast, make sure to give me a follow over there and give this podcast a five-star rating and leave me a good review because it would definitely help me a lot, especially since I am new on the platform. If you are listening on Spotify or YouTube, make sure to give me a five-star or a thumbs up and drop me a comment because I love, love, love hearing from you. And I'm really looking forward to see you again on my next episode. Goodbye. Bye-bye.